Hey everyone, uh, Glenn Sanford here and uh, welcome to our expansion podcast where we talk about personal and professional development here at eXp Realty. That was a little tongue twister. Uh, today I'm uh, excited to talk to uh, Skyly McCollum out of uh, Kamloops, British Columbia uh, with the Forever Kamloops Real Estate Group. Uh, welcome Skyly. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just, I, I feel very grateful to be here actually. So thank you for inviting me. Oh, and no, thanks for, thanks for coming over. We had this little, we had a little uh, conversation before we started the podcast with some of the team in the background. And you just mentioned that you have snow on the ground up there. And uh, the conversation was that uh, something about uh, that we've got, we're doing, uh, we have three people from, from Canada, uh, Toronto, uh, Kamloops, I'm not sure where the other person's from. We're going to do that here in a little bit. And uh, the comment was uh, like, we've got a lot of Canadians and it was, and it's what, well, they replied really quickly when we sent a request out. I, and I made the comment that it's, well, it's because it's, it's, it's probably snowy and they got nothing else better to do than sit in front of the computer and actually reply. <laughs> oh my God. It's true. We're all stuck indoors right now, not wanting to go out. So well, well, so, so how did you get in real estate? You've been in business uh, six years or so? Yeah, it's just been over six years. And to save you a long winded story, I'll give you the very quick version. Um, I was actually going to school to be a psychologist um, straight out of uh, high school. And well, you picked the right industry. Yeah, right. I know. It's kind of funny. I didn't realize they went hand in hand and they really do. Um, but I was going to school for psychology and I was working at a pub and my hu husband and I actually, we've been together um, 13 years now. So we've been together since high school and we decided to have a baby. Like I, I want to say it's fairly early, but I mean, I guess a lot of people have babies that, that young, but um, we bought our house and he was like, let's have our first kid. And I was like, I said yes. And then after I woke up with a six month old in my arms, I was like, I don't want to go back to school and serve and try and raise this child. Um, so there was actually a, a mortgage broker that was a regular at the pub that I used to work at. And so I kind of interviewed him because I was like, I should do that. Like, it looks like there's a flexible schedule, no ceiling for your income, all those things that kind of work for the real estate industry as well. And in the middle of that conversation, he kind of said something about maybe that I should be a realtor. And so I interviewed with a realtor for a team before I even like registered for my, um, schooling at that point. And once I talked to that person, I was so sold and I had my license three months later. So. No, and, and that's pretty quick uh, I, I, to get your license, I think in Canada, like a, a lot of times it takes a little bit longer for a lot of Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it usually, it's a, it's a year long program here. Um, and then you can do it as fast as the three months. So you can hand in up to two assignments a week. Uh, there's 20 assignments. So it would take about 10 weeks. And then once you finish that last assignment, you can register for your exam. So that's kind of, I did it as fast as humanly possible. But the reason for that is because I had a six month old and my mat leave was going to run out. So pretty much the as soon as I started that interview process to signing up for my licensing course to my license landing, she turned one years old and my mat leave ran out and I was ready to go because I didn't want to have this empty space of no income and trying to serve and all, like all of that. So I was in a very big hurry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and did say. that, did, and did that, uh, did that power you to some, some, some early success then in your career as well? I would say yes, um, because it was like, it was do or die. I feel like a lot of people get into it and they're like, I'm going to take a slow start to this and I'm just going to get my feet in and just, and I, I just didn't have the time. I really didn't right. have the time. Um, I ended up selling 40 houses my first year and it's probably because I had this child who needed me to do well because um, I didn't have another option. So, well, congratulations on that. And, and, uh, you know, hungry, being hungry definitely plays a, a role. I, I was, um, you know, it was always interesting when I interview people and they'd uh, want to either join the team or become an agent. And they said, well, I like houses. And that was their whole motivation. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, there's gotta be a lot more motivation than that because this is not the easiest business to be in. Um, if you're, if you, if you're not hungry, uh, cause I, you know, it, I agree with that. And on top of that, you know, it's funny, like two things. Number one is that I didn't think it was going to be the way that it is. 
So I did join a team and thank God for that because I had no idea what I got myself into. Yes, I did interview with somebody before, uh, but it's definitely a lot different than you think it's going to be uh, from the outside looking in. It's it everything is very superficial, and I feel like that's with every industry. But for real estate specifically, because that's mostly what I know, it is a lot more intensive than what you think it is on the outside. So there was that, and then um, yeah, I just feel like you got to, got to get it done. And it just, yeah. Now how, and so uh, we kind of, I kind of adjusted at it, but uh, um, so how has the psychology background played a role in, in you, your being an agent? Uh, I think it's really helped a lot actually, because we are in a people business and you do need to know how to deal with different personality types. I mean, I do truly believe that there are, different people out there for different types of agents. So not one, it's not a one size fits all. There's tons of different clients out there and tons of different agents out there. So um, there's that, but I mean, being able to kind of change your, not change your personality, but being able to kind of like bend a little bit to what your client needs is obviously very important. I feel like for being in a, in a customer based industry, you would need to be able to pivot. And i believe that we should be pivoting about 80% and our clients really only need to move about 20. Um, that being said, I also find psychology super fascinating. So I love learning about different people and what kind of makes them tick and like different personality types, their disc assessments. I, I love all of that. I think it's super fascinating. And one of my favorite books is the um, how to win friends and influence people. I think I've read it like four times now. And if even if you're not into psychology, something like that really helps you grow and like just learn where people are kind of coming from with their different perspectives. So, so, so a quick, quick trivia question. What's the most important word? In, uh, what's the most imp important word in a conversation? Oh my gosh. I don't know. It's, it's uh, so how do we, it's a person's name. It's the, uh, it's oh, the, uh... yes. right? and you're supposed to say it a few times. That's so funny. Yes. I'm like, now yes. I need to reread the book again, but yeah. And they, I actually said this yesterday, I left from an appointment. And when I was saying goodbye, I said the person's name and it was from the book. Cause the more times you say that person's name, right? Like it's just, people like to hear their own name. Mm -hmm. They really the, do. It, yeah, I read the book quite a number of times when I was I was younger as well. There was another book that I, that I really enjoyed. This was in the eighties. Um, and so in case there's another book that's out there with the same, same name, uh, but it was called Conversationally Speaking. And I felt like that book took what I learned in how to win friends and influence people and actually gave me a roadmap on actually how to use those techniques where I thought, you know, how to win friends and influence people is kind of a macro view of how to get along and to, you know, at to to let the other person talk and sort of be a good listener and, and some of the some of those things. But then, you know, how do you op ask an open ended question? What's the difference between an open ended and a closed ended question? It's not really described in that book. And so conversationally speaking, for me, was like the operator operating manual for how to win friends and influence people. So if you ever get a chance to check it out. Yes, I'm definitely going to look at that one. And with like, lead generation and stuff too. I thought that the psychology was really important, especially when you're having phone conversations with people and you're like, you were just saying the conversationally speaking, you need to be able to direct conversations. And there's a lot of things that you can say to direct conversation and the way to ask questions to get people from point A to point B, which is a lot of, that's a lot of our business and same with closing, right? Like you can have tons of clients and if you're not closing them, then you're not getting them anywhere. <laughs> But right. you have to ask those questions. And if you know how to ask those questions, you're going to do more deals. So I do think it's really important. Yeah. And I think about it in the, in the idea that they, they, they're with us for a reason. They're, they want, they, they intend to buy a house or they intend to sell a house. And it's our job to help them do what they already intend to do. Um, mm -hmm. Which is, if we think about it from that perspective, it's no longer sales, right? It's actually just, you just really just, you know, if, if, if they don't work with you, then it's probably that you didn't sort of help them understand how you were going to help them along the journey. And part of that's in asking questions, you know, what's most important to you? When do you want to move? You know, um, you know, 
you know, what are the you know, various aspects, what all just asking those questions so that as you build up that, that blueprint of what they're wanting to do, it's natural they're going to do that with you. So questions is, is super key to actually getting you to the closing table. Yeah, I, there was one of my mentors ended up telling me this and it's just super true. It's like he who controls the conversation is the one who asks all the questions. It's like you always have to end what you're saying with a question because that's how you get people to go where you want them to go. And it's not like in a bad way either. Like you said, if, if, if I can see how people could use it in a bad way, but if you have the intent of like your goal is my goal and I'm going to help you get there and that you're just asking the questions to get them to where they want to go, but they're just like not getting there themselves. Then I think that's a, it's a good thing, right? Like you always have to bring them back to what their goal is. Cause I mean, going through the real estate process is not easy. There was again, someone else who told me that buying and selling in real estate is actually up there in stress level as having kids and getting married. So you're dealing with really high emotions. And a lot of times you're not thinking super clearly. I mean, I've bought and bought and sold a few houses myself, and I know that it is very stressful. Um, so helping people get there and asking those proper questions and bringing them back to their comment, like the actual goal and reminding them of their goal. Yeah. Like back to it again. Yes. I think the psychology is so crazy important and like the personal development around it too. I think that if I didn't take that journey of going to university first, I'd obviously be in a lot different of a space now than I would have been if I just jumped into real estate right off the bat. Right. Well, I, I think there's a, there's certainly, um, uh, you know, real estate's a tough business to do. It's tougher when you're young because, you know, in a lot of people's eyes, you haven't built up the credibility yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and then, and, and if you can, you know, you'll make it when you're young, then you're definitely going to do better as you, as you, as you get older in the business. Um, so now is the market in, in Canada making a shift like it is here in the U S Oh my gosh. I think I, I believe that it's everywhere. So to answer your question, yes, it has been quite a bit different. Um, a lot of people are scared right now. Um, but I mean, everything has a cycle. It's all gonna, right. It's going to be okay. Right. Well, how it's are how are you managing the how are how are you managing the shift? Um. Well, I just upped our lead generation because there's always going to be people who are needing to buy and sell real estate. So I really just upped our lead generation. And I mean, there are some people who are waiting until spring, but that's not to say that there's not people who are ready to go right now for different reasons. So I. Yeah, I upped our lead generation. We're just doubling down and making extra calls. Um, and then just like managing people's expectation too, right? Like I'm available if they change their mind and if they want to have an open open conversation, I'm not here to change anyone's mind as to what the market is doing um, and to make them not feel scared about it. People have those feelings and it's totally okay to have those feelings, but if they want to have a conversation about it and like see my perspective on it and that I do believe it's going to be okay. And historically it's going to be okay. Then I'm here for that too. But I've just doubled down on our client volume so that there are going to be transactions. There's, there's no, there's no, nothing in my mind that says that we're not going to have any sales in the future. Like I'm not scared about that. So. Right. And so now you speak about increasing or uh, your lead generation. Um, I, I suspect it's online or, internet but what how is your what is your lead gen strategy how what is upping that mean um so we have like three we have three main marketing pillars that we use on the team the biggest one that we do i don't want to say biggest but i feel like the one that actually gets us the most sales every year is our online gen lead generation program so it's it's the typical um, google adwords that we pay for people sign up to our website we make the phone calls nurture those clients and then eventually they come through the pipeline ready to go based on their timeline so in we spend a certain amount of dollars every month and i just ended up adding extra money into that so that we get more leads every month because they pay it's pay per click right so right yep and and so do you manage your ppc spend or do you have somebody on your team that does that um, so I pay a company called Asterisk. They are the ones who do all the Google AdWords and I'm the one who tells them like how much we're willing to spend every month. Okay, cool. So you yeah. outsource that. They kind of manage that for you. Yeah. And, uh, and then for, for in your market, 
of course, every market is a little different, but what are you finding is your, your average cost per lead? Um, so originally, <laughs> originally we were actually paying into a company. I just switched actually, because I was keeping track every single month, how many leads were coming in. We were using a company called make it rain and it was like 30 something dollars per lead. It was quite expensive. We weren't really getting a whole lot of leads from it. Um, that being said, I didn't want to change too quickly because I was like, well, if they're really high quality, then that should be okay. Um, that being said, it ended up, it really wasn't working. So we ended up switching over to the asterisk company. And now our uh, pay-per-click is probably down to about $10 per lead instead. And we've actually okay. more than doubled, I believe, how many leads are actually coming in on a month with the same budget, which has been amazing. So, Oh, awesome. So, mm -hmm. so you've been able to in, in, improve the, the lead quality, uh, the number of leads, and, uh, and then you're increasing your spend on top of that. So that's helping you keep uh, at least the front end of your funnel full. Uh, yeah. How many agents do you have on? Do you have a team? Do you have, yeah, so we do have a team. Um, there's myself and two other agents on the team. And then we have, it's, we're, we're so off balance, and it sounds very weird to say this, but we have uh, four admin staff, and then we have three agents. Okay. And, and, yeah. uh, uh, you've got that many admin staff because you're doing so many deals, I suspect. Um, the reason we have so many is because originally when I started creating the team, I was looking for a Jack of all trades. And I realized that that is just not it. I real for myself, I don't know what other people do. I kind of realized that somebody who wants to make phone calls in the database as like an inside sales associate and someone who wants to sit behind a computer and do paperwork, those are not the same people. They don't. And so based on psychology and their disc profiles, I was like, you know what? I might as well split this up and have someone who's really, really good at this role do this role. And I might have someone who's really, really good at this role do this role instead. So we do have for administrative, they are not all full time. And that is actually okay, because that's what they want anyway. So the role that they take up, um, and the and the hours that they work actually fits with what they wanted and with their personality. So that's why we have more admin than agents. Now, now do you uh, are did you have an office? Do they come to an office? Or they does your team work remote? They are remote. We actually did talk about getting an office, but um, again, all of them actually would prefer working from home. I, we only have one male on the team and that was completely unintentional, but, um, I feel like I've attracted all of these women that actually have kids and just working remotely from home works for them. And that's kind of how the hours ended up working as well is that they didn't want full-time hours. They just wanted to supplement their family's income and they had these certain strengths and it just kind of fit perfectly. Um, one of our assistants actually works remotely in Mexico four months out of the year. Oh, awesome. Well, so, you know, and that's really the trend, right? If we think about it, you know, if you look at the, when I got in the business in 2002, all real estate teams were co-located. They were all in the same single location. Uh, they all worked in one market. Uh, that was where the high speed internet was. Um, that's where the managing broker was. I mean, there was, that was the thing. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, and then as we, uh, I, and I ran six real estate teams before I started, uh, EXP and, uh, and they were all over the country. And, and then our teams were working, not, they were working in offices, but for multiple teams. So there was the staffing side. Uh, and then when we started EXP, we literally said, Hey, go, everybody go home, take your computers home. And, and this is either going to work if, and if it, or it's not going to work. Uh, but, uh, and then I said, if it doesn't work, we're all looking for work. That was my motivational speech. <laughs> um, so we, we, so we made it work. Uh, but now it's actually, I believe that anybody who works and builds their real estate team in a fully remote, um, aligned way, uh, they'll have more success over time because it gives them the ability to not be limited by geography. Yeah. And, and, and so whether it be agents you want to bring onto your team, uh, whether it be adding skill sets uh, from other parts of the world to actually enhance what you're doing, um, you, know, you should be able to do 
a lot of the work at lower cost than if you were having somebody come to an office because you don't have to recruit from just your one locale to do yeah. that work. Uh, and then, so, so then the question becomes, what tools do you use to keep everybody connected? Um, well, we do lots of Zoom. I uh, think not that there's a silver lining to COVID, I would say, but I mean, technology did move very, very quickly. And I am grateful for that aspect of things. I feel like I'm always a glass half full person, tiptoe around that because not everybody's right. going to feel that way. But um, I, it did, it moved everything really forward. And Zoom being as good of a platform as it is, we use it all the time. Um, one of our assistants is actually in the Philippines. And she is, has her own private zoom room. She hangs out in there. So if you want to go check in on her and like touch base with her and work with her, she is in that zoom room, which is really cool. Um, and then we also have weekly meetings that we touch base on, um, obviously, cause we need to be connected somehow and zoom just makes it really easy to do that. And I feel like we don't waste time driving either. I feel like everyone's kind of more efficient with their time, uh, there is a program that I use as well uh, for some of the admin staff. It's called Screenshot Monitor so that we know that everybody is actually working uh, as well. Um, what other technology? I'm trying to think. We were getting into Trello as well so that mm -hmm. everyone has um, all their projects kind of on the go and everyone can see where the projects are. I was thinking of switching to a sauna. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's kind of like yep. Trello on steroids. It's a little complicated. I'm going to have to take some tutorials on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're, we're um, so I, I'm a big Trello guy. Uh, we just started to work with Monday, but a platform you may want to consider. And of course this is for all of all, anybody listening to the podcast and we're doing it right now on the, um, success side of the business, but we're actually going to be doing on the EXP side as well, is actually putting your team, because it's 100% remote, um, put your team on Discord. Um, Discord. I, yeah. So if you build out a Discord, you can basically have your assistant in the Philippines. She can be in there with your the rest of your team in real time. They can be basically it puts your gives you your, your zoom rooms it gives you your 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 bulletin boards or chat chat threads it gives you your working groups and it also gives you a way potentially um if you're thinking about you know your market and cam loops potentially even giving consumers a place that they can come in and start have com conversations around cam loops real estate on sort of more of an an external facing part of the platform. So it'd be a really interesting thing to think about because I, I think if you could figure out a way to integrate your um, your IDX, whatever you're using for doing your lead gen mm -hmm. and actually adding a little button there, say, hey, hey, come into our office remotely into yeah. our Discord office, uh, it could create another way to create uh, a conversion and, 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 and conversation around uh, the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually really cool. And a lot of um, the generations change, right? Like not there, there are certain generations that really liked coming into brick and mortar buildings. And then the newer generations, like millennials and Gen Z, like they don't want to walk into an office, it makes them extremely uncomfortable. They don't even want to pick up the phone. Let's, let's be right, honest. There, so there's too many, there's too many adults there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, but they, I think that that would actually be really cool because having those newer generations, like they're gonna, they're, they're gonna need to find a way to actually communicate with people when they want to move, move forward with things. And I mean, texting, I believe it or not, I'm actually not a huge texter. I actually really like talking on the phone, um, which is funny because I am a millennial, but um, it just it, efficiency wise, it makes more sense. And if, if, this actually did become a thing efficiency wise, it would be very quick to just meet with who you want to meet. And I think that the newer generations do, they want, they are that instant gratification. They want things really quickly. So that would be a way to actually satisfy that for sure. Yeah. Well, definitely check it out and feel free to come check out our, our server uh, that we're doing for success. And um, I'll, I'll just give the address here um, just so, so people can hear it but mm -hmm. it's dis discord.gg slash success, one word. So discord.gg slash success. Go there, join the server, um, and you can see how it works. 
but then think about it doing that, but for your real estate team and then being able to have people sort of come in and have conversations, I think mm -hmm. would be a, especially given that you're building a business that's uh, using a lot of internet lead gen as your, your primary driver. So. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about doing the office, like I said, but we talked about it as a team and I really was like, you know what, if we took the money we'd spend on rent and we sunk it into the business, that just makes way more sense. Yeah, for sure. So. Well, you know, uh, Skyly, thank you so much um, for jumping in on this. I, I think there were some great takeaways that uh, uh, agents at EXP and agents anywhere will be able to kind of kind of work with. And and thanks for being part of EXP. Congratulations on being, uh, I think you're a, a two-time icon at EXP. So I am. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, it's, it's very exciting. I love that award. I just think it's so amazing. Um, you, recognition in general is amazing, but it's just, it's just a really nice thing that you added. And I feel like everyone's really grateful for it. Even the people that are on our group chat, because EXP in Camelops has everybody on our board is on one group chat. I don't know if they do that everywhere, but everyone's always rooting each other on. And whenever anyone gets that icon award on it, it's just, it's really nice. So it's really good feeling. Everybody on the group chat always gives shout outs to each other. Like it's just, it's a, it's all around great for morale. You know what I mean? Awesome. So where can people follow you at? Um, so my Instagram is being Skyly with two H's on the end. I put a lot of stuff on there. It's a lot about my personal life because I feel like you got to entertain people. And then I sprinkle in a little bit of real estate around that just so obviously it's top of mind. But um, there's that. And then our Facebook page, we do have an Instagram as well uh, for our team account. But our Facebook page, I think, has more content, which would be Forever Kamloops Real Estate Group on Facebook. Well, awesome. Well, thanks again for, for jumping on here. And uh, again, uh, that's over and out. So that is yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. Thanks. Good Glenn. stuff. Thank, thanks, Kylie. Okay.